Hello again, welcome to Painting the Light. So today, as promised, I'm gonna show you how to do a black canvas and we paint these canvases with black gesso. Black gesso is a water-based paint that we cover the canvas with a foam brush, a sponge, whatever you get. And we always let the black gesso dry completely before we cover it with uh, transparent colors. Transparent colors are colors that you can actually see through them. So this canvas looks black but it's covered with transparent colors and in here I have used Thalo Blue. I have covered uh, this portion of the canvas with Thalo Blue. Around this I have got uh, Prussian Blue. And down here I have a mixture of uh, Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. Uh, I'm using the Twins brush to cover them. This is gonna be our medium for today and that means that we have a thin even coat of wet paint. It's a firm paint. I've used no liquid medium like liquid white or liquid clear. So uh, I think we'll start right away. Let me fix this a little bit. So I'm gonna take a clean twinch brush and I want to have a light source in this painting. So I'm gonna start with titanium white on the twinch brush and we tap it firmly, firmly into the bristles and we'll go right here. We have to decide where we want our light source. Now I have Thalo Blue as I told you in here so I will start using crisscross strokes right here. As you can see that the white is an opaque color and it shows us what we have underneath. I want to make a scene that it, that happens that takes place deep into the woods. We're gonna have a little stream or something. And as we go far away from the light source, you can see that this is getting darker and darker. Now, in order to achieve the desired li lightness in such painting, I suggest we clean our brushes thoroughly with paint thinner and make sure you dry them very well before you apply your next your next layer of paint and in here I have a bitter rug this is just a wire rug that I scrap the bristles against it's very cheap and very easy to buy it goes in the bottom of my of my bin, my waste paper basket and we really we really need to get all the thinner out as much as possible so I will go with a clean dry brush right into the titanium white and we're gonna repeat the same procedure we did earlier starting from our light source and working outwards so I will come I will come right here and make it lighter and you can really do this as many times as desired but every time I suggest that you, that you wash your brush you never want the dark paint from in here to get it back into the light source otherwise you have destroyed what you have done alright, one more time for me you can leave it right here if you want but I just want it to show much brighter in order for you to understand what we're doing. I shake off most of the paint thinner into my brush before I scrap it against my wire rack. I'm also scrapping it up against a paper towel and then I go against I thought I'd get the left of my easel. So this is not a mess going on here, there are just uh, very small uh, dots going around. But it's not a disaster because most of the paint thinner has gone away. Now another one, one more time, straight titanium white, and we'll go right above our light source. And we blend it outwards. 
always, always using crisscross strokes. It's very, very important because crisscross strokes blend easier. Now I'm gonna take a clean and dry two inch brush and I'm gonna bring all this together. I'm gonna remove the, the brush strokes, make it softer. Something like so. Now very lightly, but very lightly go across. Now as you can see we have the desired lightness, it's very nice, very easy to do and it will give you some practice with black canvases, it's a very nice scene. Just caress the canvas in here. So today I want to show you different ways to paint foliage and bushes and all this stuff. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the brush that I applied the transparent colors with. It is just a dirty twinch brush. And I'm gonna take the twinch brush, go into some Taylor Blue and tap it, tap it, tap it firmly into the brush. Just Taylor Blue and just a little bit of white for me. Using both sides of the brush. And by this, by this tapping we achieve a little bit of paint on the edge of the bristles but not very much paint. I want to paint some trees that are uh, far away in the distance and close to the light source. So just by using the corner of the brush I will come up here and just by tapping we can achieve some little grass effects as you can see. A little more paint and what we really want to do is layer those trees a little bit more paint, a little bit more to the other side, but not very much paint on the brush, not much paint. And as you can see, I'm leaving the light source out. I have the outside of the trees in here that I'm gonna highlight later. And if you are right-handed with like me, you can see that painting this side, this curve using the right corner of the brush and of the brush is much easier than using the other side. So now I'm gonna take a little bit more paint, I'm gonna take a little bit of Thalo Blue too into that and I'm gonna layer, put another layer of trees just by using the color, the corner of the brush. Same blue color. And we just throw this in because we want layers, different layers. It's very, very important. Just by using the corner of the brush. Can you see the difference in here? And in here I want to do the same. Just like so. Okay, now I want to go even further behind, so I'm gonna take a little bit of black, of midnight black and Prussian blue mixed together. A little bit more black into this. And maybe take a little bit of Van Dyke brown too. Tap it nicely and push it at the same time. And we'll come up here and make an indication of another happy tree. I'm still using the same dirty brush and layer after layer you can see that I have three different layers of trees already and it's not necessary to say that this is just a little tree they could be a lot of trees but there's a lot of darkness going on and we have no idea what's going on so we just throw them in a little bit more paint and then go in here too. Cover the scene, bring it, bring it closer. And now that I'm going far away from the light source, I'm gonna take straight midnight black 
definitely than black. And I'm gonna color this in. I'm using more paint right now because I want more darkness. Tap it nicely. And the further we go, the darker our colors should be. Let's fill this in. And I'm gonna bring some land masses in here. Okay, now I want I want to have some tree trunks that are playing around here, so I'm gonna take the liner brush and I'm gonna go into some Van Dyke Brown and I use paint thinner to thin my paint down it's very important to have a thin paint in order to make sticks and twigs we bring it to a sharp point by rolling it into the paint I really hope you can see it and I want to start from further behind I'm gonna start from the bottom and go upwards and just indications of little tree trunks a little bit more paint thinner and I'm not using much paint right now and you can also leave some uh, you can leave a gap in here in order to show that there are many many leaves around here a nice tree trunk leaves right here little bit more paint thinner for me a little bit more color and we're playing around this go to the other side too and I'm gonna paint a nice tree trunk in here and I'm always I'm always following the shape of my tree put up some sticks, some twigs now the furthest I go the further I go I want lighter colors so I'm gonna take a little bit of paint thinner and some dark sienna this is a, a lighter brown I'm gonna put some white into this too a little bit more white thin it down always keep the paint thin and we'll go right here and make the indication of a tree trunk another tree trunk lives right here And go to this side too. And now I'm gonna take some more paint thinner with a lighter color because I'm going closer to the to the light source. So I want some lighter tree trunks in here. Something about Lexo. and in here I want to do the same so I'm leaving some gaps right between the leaves because it adds more interest to our painting now I want to highlight all this and I'm gonna start from this uh, closer to the light source I'm gonna take a one inch brush and remember that last time we just pulled through the paint making this curve on the edge of the bristles but now I'm gonna use it and I'll show you. I will clean this spot. And we're gonna just tap the paint. I'm gonna take a little bit of white, but not very much paint right now. I want just indications. And take that some white, and I'm gonna push. I'm gonna say I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the background color. So I'm actually loading color on the edge of the bristles, but not very much and I will go right here and just using the left corner of the brush I want to paint some highlights if your paint won't stick you can always thin it down or add a little more paint I will go with more paint 
I want this more distinct. And as you can see, thousands and thousands of leaves live in here. I'm going to highlight this one too. And this gives us good practice. Remember that I tap and push. I won't paint on the edge of the bristles. Load both sides and then push. And the more paint you're using, the more distinct highlights you're gonna have. And now that we are closer to the light source, we always want more distinct highlights. I'm gonna highlight this one too. And do the same thing in here, but the further we go, the further we go away, the darker we want our foliage to be. Always using the corner of the brush. A little bit in here. Let's make a happy little bush right in here. Just by using the corner of the brush. And let it get darker and darker as we go further away. Okay, now we have actually made uh, the ones further behind we're coming closer let me let me fix this one I prefer to hide the tree trunk so it doesn't just float around okay and I'm gonna use the same brush I'm gonna go into some cadmium yellow and I'm gonna use the same technique with a bit of Sub green into that and top this nicely. Can take some yellow ochre, a little bit more of the sub green, and we push. Now let's go right up in here and just make some nice foliage just by using the corner of the brush. And as we do with every layering of foliage, we have to leave dark areas in between. A little bit of yellow ochre into my brush. And as you can see, I'm leaving dark areas as I told you. I'm trying to save some of my tree trunks to show through. And we use just the corner. As you can see, I'm using no pressure at all. A little bit of Indian yellow. And we also push the other, the other trees back just wherever you want your foliage to be maybe there is a little bush living right here and now we go farther away from the light source I'm gonna add more sub green to that I want it a little bit darker just about like so darker and darker Vary the color as you go downwards. It's really up to you to decide what kind of color you want. I'm adding a little bit of Indian yellow. And now even further, I'm gonna take some plain sub green and I'll just let it happen. As you can see darker and darker as we go away from the light source. It's very, very important to know where are you going. I just want to go further away. I want to push everything behind. And maybe in here too. A couple of indications. Okay. I'm gonna leave this brush down. So I also want to have some bushes in here that will push back the current trees. So I'm gonna use a dark color. Let me clean off my palette. I've made quite a mess with a thin paint. Just make sure you do not dirty your clothes. Okay. I'm gonna take the big brush again. I'm gonna go into some uh, midnight black, 
some Van Dyke brown, this is just brass mixed. A little bit of Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue, Allegiant crimson, but not much paint. And I'm just pulling downwards, making the curve, but I'm gonna come back and highlight it um, with the Twins brush. I'm gonna show you a different way, so let's go up in here and decide where our brush, our bushes live. Just leave the indications. Not very much paint today for that. I just want something dark to push everything behind. A little bit more paint. Okay. Now let's take, let's, let's wash a brush. I'm gonna wash this brush here. Actually, it doesn't have much paint, so I'm just gonna take the twins brush that I used to blend all this together. I'm gonna use just the tip, and I'm gonna go into some cadmium yellow. I'm gonna pull this down and tap it, so I have paint on the edge of the brush, and this is how we're gonna make our folds today. I'm going into my yellows, some sub green, and just by tapping, ensure a nice uh, color distribution, distribution on the edge of the bristles. And this is how I'm going to paint. So come up here and see. Just by using the top corner, I have thousands and thousands of leaves. It's really that easy. Vary the color. And then I'll add another bush right here. Gonna add a little bit of bright red into this one. And we got leaf indications of uh, probably some flowers. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm always, always using the corner of the brush. Let me show this again. You see I have lots of variations of color and I just tap, I hope you can see it, I just tap. So I go right here and you decide what kind of color you want. And I'm hardly using any pressure. Now I want to go darker and darker so I'll go with some sub green. little bit more paint and I go darker and darker now in order to achieve an even more realistic effect I will wash, I will scrape off most of the green color and I will go into some titanium white but not very much and as these are closer to the light source I'm gonna top only the top with a little bit of titanium white so it shows that some light is playing through but very little color a little bit here and there and that's easy we have thousands and thousands of leaves and we go darker and darker as we go further away So I think uh, today I'm going to show you a waterfall. I really like waterfalls. So in here I have some halo green and halo blue. I have a spot open in here. So I'm going to take a fan brush. Let me clean my titanium white here. I want some pure white. And I'm going to dip my fan brush into a small amount of liquid white in order to thin it down but very small amount and I will take some phthalo blue into this a little bit more of the liquid white just, just a little bit to thin it down now you have to decide where your stream is so I will come Using the edge, I will come just right behind these bushes and scrape off an indication of a nice stream. 
but probably they can't dine here and we have a waterfall just like so it's very easy to do let's make a couple of splashes and as you can see I start with small strokes and I make a bigger movement as I come forward now in order to make splashes I'm gonna use just the corner of the brush I'm not having a lot of paint on the bristles and I'm just pushing outwards and lots of splashing water comes alive that easily now we need something to seclude this waterfall so I'm gonna use my knife today and make some rocks that, I'm, that they're gonna actually hold the whole uh, bushes and the waterfall so I will use just straight Van Dyke Brown here just Van Dyke Brown we pull this very flat, we cut across we always always load the paint on the knife like this and I'm gonna go right here and seclude the waterfall I'm gonna close this in and also make sure that I hold all these nice bushes that I made just like pushing. Now I'm I'm using my finger on the blade because I need pressure, I need some lamp. I can do it that way too, but it will be easier. We're not applying highlights now, we're just laying on some paint. And you also decide the lay of the land if you want to have it straight, if you want to have some curves. And by the time the canvas is black, I'm not worried about leaving any gaps or anything. Just fill this in. And I'm using string Van Dyke Brown. Let's go to the other side too, a little bit more brown, pull it very flat, get a roll of paint. And we'll come right down here, right above the, of the splashes, scrape them off. It's okay because we will come back and fix them. Just make sure you have a very, very dry paint for this. It's very important. We seclude the waterfall. And bring the lamp together. Just about like so. And this will give you very good practice with a knife. It will teach you how to paint stones and stuff. Now in here I want it a little bit more rounded. I want a little bit more paint. And it comes like this. Okay. I fill this in. Now, before I make the splashes in here, I want to have uh, some rock indications. So, I want actually to highlight what I'm doing here already. So, I will take some white, some titanium white, some dark sienna, and a little bit of midnight black into this. I'm gonna leave it marbly, a little bit more white. And as you can see on my roll of paint, I have lots of uh, different paint uh, indications, little uh, bumps and stuff. And I will come to the ants closer to the source, and like we did with the mountain last week, using no pressure at all, we just caress the rocks. I want to make them a little bit more roundish. looks like a cliff to me and by using no pressure at all you achieve all these all these little bumps and stuff same thing in here okay and you can also take the brush you made the foliage with and bring some foliage right into the stones. We'll bring it all together. 
and it also adds another layer of bushes right in front of the others and you can also go by the time we have that fuel paint underneath you can go right above the highlights without mixing mud that easily some grass has gone downwards I want to play with the rocks and if you think that your paint won't stick you can add the least least little amount of paint thinner a little bit more color I'm playing through the colors I'm using dark sienna I'm sorry I'm using yellow ochre bright red and darker as we go further away so I want to make some more splashes I'm gonna take some white and little blue and just bring this all together just the corner and you can also you can also give it a roundish effect I'll show you I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown and bring this even downwards add a little bit more texture to your paint like this just fill this in with your palette knife highlight those just using the same color so we have another layer of stones with no pressure at all we're using no no pressure in order to make the paint break and if you want to cheat a little bit you can make some more foliage and make another layer of bushes right here just by using the corner of the brush you can also use the technique that we were showing in the other episodes with a rounded corner of the one inch brush you can also do the same with a twins brush okay so we have different layers we have achieved uh, depth in our painting and a lot of interest by painting foliage right on top of the rocks so I will take my fan brush titanium white and Taylor blue and I'm gonna make some nice water lines in here just by scraping off that easily I'm gonna clean all the edges and can you see the Taylor green and Taylor blue are right underneath this is what adds interest in our painting. Now I'm gonna paint some more water in here. I'm just caressing the canvas with a fan brush. And we're coming forward, you can see the water coming towards us as the color from underneath pops in. Just wherever you want. And try to make these strokes as straight as possible. Now in here I think that I want to have, let me take the small knife this time, I'm going to take the small knife and a little bit of my Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to have some rocks in here, the same way we paint the mountains with and we're going to do another layer of waterfalls, some stones highlight them with uh, the lighter color we have dark sienna, midnight black and titanium white and we really want to have the color right above this here is our light source so very lightly we'll just caress the canvas from light above but not much detail not much detail okay 
gonna make some shadows I'm taking a clean knife and just bring this down you can take some Van Dyke brown to fix it just like having a little mountain playing to the fountain this is a forest fountain for me so we're gonna need uh, water coming above these rocks I'm gonna take some liquid white my titanium white in here a little bit more titanium white we're going above uh, firmed paint so I will just come in here and splash it and splash it load the brush as necessary I also want to come in here and make another little a little splash you know it's very very important to know how and when to load the brush I don't want much paint in order for my splashes to happen as you can see in here I have more paint so I actually end up with a, a little blob while in here I have less paint and I have more realistic water splashes let me wipe off my brush I've picked up some brown but that's okay so I, le I, left, I leave actually the splashes go around and we let the water play around and have fun okay so in order to seclude all this I'm gonna put some foliage in here that will actually hold the fountain together so I'm gonna take my big brush, some Indian yellow, some yellow ochre a little bit of sub green and let's go, by the time I have I have my dark in here I don't need to paint to apply more dark paint the black gesso does the work for me a little bit of bright red and this is just a simple little scene that you can do using the same equipment as we've done in the past a bigger bush right here and you can actually see through the water A bigger bush in here and the darker one right above. Want to make this one a bit bigger and maybe there is one that comes right from outside the painting. Nice little bushes playing through. I'm gonna scrub off some indications of tree trunks. I will let the black show through as you can see and I think we have a finished painting this is just uh, an easy little scene that will give you a lot of practice with a palette knife uh, on the stones we use the one inch brush for these you always learn to layer the painting we've done uh, some waterfalls you can come back and fix whatever you don't like I don't like the splashes in here so I can, I can actually bring this even further above you know just whatever you like a little bit more splash in here and here and we have a finished painting I really hope you enjoyed it I'm looking forward to seeing you next time happy painting and take care I'll see you soon